G'day guys, we're back here in, this is Auckland, and it's just trying to rain as per usual with these, so we're under a shelter. Morning, Ree. Well, what is it? It's, oh, it's almost lunchtime. Afternoon, Ree. And, uh, I'm sorry for despairing yesterday. Where in Auckland are you? Yeah, it did. So I'd literally just set up Brody uh, down in the garden. I had this cool little view. It looked really fancy. And um, anyway, turned out that uh, it's moment we were all set up rain started pouring down so we're now under the shelter to make sure it doesn't happen again g'day jay i looked at the weather report this time i was actually uh preemptive in my approach but uh on this particular occasion i cooked it and the reason i cooked it is uh The reason I cooked it was that it said no rain until about one o'clock and I thought that's plenty of time. But it didn't happen, so I got stuck. Thanks Brody. He painted the style of Rita Angus. If you're reading that and don't know who Rita Angus is, she's a very, very famous New Zealand painter. And her work was in Te Papa recently. So that's cool we did that. Good on him. Proud of him. Um, but I do try and use the craziest color palette that I can. That's part of the fun. But since I am in Auckland and this is a flat, don't be surprised if flatmates wander outside and uh, say hi. Cheers, Tina. I haven't seen your name here before, Tina, but welcome. Hi from Hawaii. How you doing? Welcome. Is it raining in Hawaii too? Is that why you're on TikTok Live at the moment? Because that would make perfect sense. I've been there is uh, Mexico City, CDMX. This is a custom piece. Uh, so it is. I got to pick the picture out, but the man is a guy named Lane Frost, and yeah. I um, like this picture because the shirt he's wearing and the ground and things, there's a lot to paint. It was a lot of fun. So. This was actually quite a clever one though, because to keep the budget low, one thing I did was I bought the uh, canvas from a um, op shop, and then I pulled the frame off it. And when I pulled the frame off, 
when I pulled the frame off it, I could paint the actual picture that was on it because it was a, it was a useless thing or no one wanted it. So I painted the picture and then when this is finished, I can put it back in the frame, which is cool. So that's the plan. So technically this piece is already framed. Um, you can just go straight back in and it's done. How much on average do your painting sell for? It depends. So this one here, um, I've kept the costs way down. You know, secondhand canvas, secondhand frame, but it all looks fantastic. It's gonna be really cool work. Um, for a fresh start, so if you get a canvas about a mm, little bit wider than this on all sides. G'day MJ, welcome back. Um, sorry for going MIA, I'm back now. Um, but for a piece about, say, 900 mil by 1.2 meters, it's about 800-ish. It chops and changes. It depends what you're after. If you come to me and say, I want a really abstract piece, like I want it to be wild, I just want one layer and I want the colors to be thrown on there, like just primarily savage way of painting. We can do that really fast. That's less than an hour of work. It's, it's mentally draining, but we can do that really fast. And then we're just talking about shipping. So that's fun. Uh, thanks, Mark. I appreciate the whipped coffee. Um, I've actually got a long black coffee and in my favorite coffee cup, so that's cool. <laughs> Thanks guys. Um, but this one here's probably got another, I think, I think two layers will do this one. So what I've got at the moment is a lot of thick paint all over it to sort of define what the shapes are. And at the moment, I know we're outside and I should be using oils because, you know, I've got fuming and this is a great time to do it, but we're using acrylics. So this little tray here is acrylic paint. And the white goo you see in between all the paint, that is, uh, I need a chicken actually, it's like a high gloss medium. There we go, Liquitex. So it doesn't matter what gloss medium you use, I haven't really seen much of a difference. This is an expensive one, but it didn't need to be. Um, I just needed one in the store we had a sale on. Um, the other thing is the paint. I've never seen these before. Usually I'm buying ones from the cheap stores. Um, the best paint from the cheap stores, like uh, Warehouse Stationery, if you're from New Zealand, um, which is Atlia, is the usual brand. This one here is called Abstract Innovative Acrylic. It's pretty good, but the best thing about it is it comes in these little sauce packets. And so as you're using it and your hands get dirty and the paint gets messy and you're just trying to do your thing, these things really do a good trick. Um, they stay clean and you can use the whole thing so it squeezes out so easily. So acrylic paint and aioli packets, who would have guessed? Thanks, Rachel. Appreciate you. Acrylics crack. I only use linseed oil. Oils paint. How much for the painting? Um, this one's actually uh, sold. Sorry, Rangi. It's a uh, commission. So, but if you're interested in a similar piece, we can definitely get something sorted. Um, yeah. So acrylics do crack. Um, I like to add a lot of mediums to it, so it goes on very thick and stays that saturated color. Um, in terms of lasting long term, it really depends. There's a lot of factors that come into it. Um, what did you paint on? Um, what mediums did you add to the paint? How did you seal it at the end? And then did you leave it in a room that was seen a whole lot of light or was it hidden you know, in storage? What did you do with it? Um, these are factors that come into it. Hey Kate, how you doing? Um, so it's slightly thick paint. Do you leave texture? Um, yes, a lot of it. And actually in this one here, especially around the um, the bottoms and the corners and in the, in the areas where the crowd is in the stadium that we're painting. Um, we've used a lot of glass beads. So that's literally balls of glass that you add to the paint. And it, um, it's really cool because it adds these really definitive lumps into it. And you sort of have to paint over them slash work around them, which, yeah, it adds, a, it, adds a, it adds a fun element to it. I've never really liked sand 
as a uh, texture to add, but glass balls, I can get on board with. Do you ever made your, um, I have dabbled, I have, but I do find that in terms of the quality that I get, um, there's a real craft to it, and I can do pretty well out of the uh, paints from the stores. If I was using a whole lot more than I'm currently using, I would definitely, definitely look at doing it some more. <laughs> Never expose any artwork medium to sun. Yeah, so um, especially if you're using epoxy gels, guys. Um, there are a lot of those, you can buy them from your Home Depot store, but I use, uh, if you've heard me yarn about it before, liquid polymer glass. So it's a, um, you've got an A chemical and a B chemical, well, it's a chemical, an A liquid and a B liquid, you mix them together, and once they're stirred, they immediately try to harden. So you get this gel and you pour it over a canvas. I, um, <laughs> cheers Ricky. And so you pour over the canvas, and there's some, if you look at my earliest reels on TikTok and Instagram, you'll see me doing it with a few pieces. And you pour that over the top. Now that's great stuff. It looks like glass, it smooths out texture, it's, um, it's fun to use. Obviously wear a respirator, that's really important. But, um, <laughs> cheers Jordan, good to have you here. Um, but, if you leave liquid epoxy glass, or any kind of epoxy, um, in the sun, it will yellow. Uh, so if you're going to use it in your artwork, be very careful about where you actually present the artwork because it will affect it long term. Um, one thing I'll do with it is use it for the lower layers, put it over the top so the canvas goes completely smooth again, and then I can add another expressive coat without having to worry about the underlying textures. So that's just me. Um, can you do an art challenge using only art supplies from the $2 shop? We well, absolutely could, Brody. And, uh, if you're starting out, that's actually 100% fine. There is nothing wrong with... I mean, I like, I like medium to good paint, but there's nothing wrong with everything you get from the $2 shop. Um, these brushes, these are hog bristle brushes. This brush here is a $3 brush. Um, you can get really nice ones, but if I bring this really close to the camera, you'll see that actually the actual bri the bristles on the end, they're not they're not all balanced, they're not, it's not, yeah, it's not a perfect brush. And I like that, because I want to get that more rough, primal style of texture. And you don't get that from a perfect, perfect mongoose, camel hair, fancy, you know, $100 brush. You get that from a bristly brush. So, get a brush good enough that the bristles don't come out, but don't waste money on getting something that's further than that. Uh, yes, Kate, okay, I am, because if I dress the part, I paint the part and I keep my paint under more control. So that's why we're here. That's uh yeah. Good out, Matthew. Not much just here in Auckland. It's a pity I actually want to be down there again, but uh, the issue is I just don't know if it's gonna rain again or not. As we get closer to twelve, the more likely it becomes, so <laughs> Thanks, Nancy. Um, the blue? Yeah, the blue's fun. Um, a lot of these colours will stay now, guys. We're, uh, I'm mixing in this uh, gloss medium, which is actually also making the paint transparent. And since it's transparent, wherever I add it, it won't take away from the colours that are already there. They'll all stay. I only use old-school varnishes using straws from a glass jar. No aerosol or spray. Good stuff. Greetings from Romania. Welcome. Um, yeah, but we, if you were to go to the two dollar shop to buy your supplies, um, I mean you can definitely do that. I would recommend you can even go almost cheaper. It sounds outrageous that you've been a two dollar shop, but almost cheaper by actually doing a um, going to. The, the, the Home Depot store and um, if you go to the Home Depot store what you might find is you can get those wooden panels and if you go for hardwood not MDF but hardwood it'll uh, have a hard it won't absorb as much moisture uh, kiwi <laughs> it won't absorb as much moisture so you can paint straight onto it 
and um, yeah, and it'll be cheaper than buying a canvas. You don't need canvases. Um, this is this is actually this is hardboard. So this is about six mil, very thin. Hardboard's fantastic. Don't don't get excited thinking you need to paint on canvases. Um, old school artists, old school oil artists were using masonite and hardboard the whole time. So yeah, don't get hung up on that whole I need a canvas to be an artist thing. It's, it's not a thing. That's in your head. Um, oh, thanks, guys. Um, your color palette is the 3D effect. Ah, uh, I don't understand the question, uh, but. There is a color palette here. We've got all the colors, and I've got um, the transparent liquid, the gloss medium, all around it. So I'm just making all the colors go on in a transparent fashion so I can get the last shades in there before I come back with whites and blacks and get that finer detail locked into place. Yeah, uh, no, it's not. I know, I know I come on here and tell you guys that if you're outside, use oils, and inside, use acrylics. These are acrylics and we're outside, so. I'm breaking the rule, but it's more of a guideline than an actual rule. Where'd you go for the panel? So this one here is actually from an op shop. It was a, uh, it was an old um, canvas with a frame around it that they were selling for $10. So I grabbed that and then after a quick sand and a gesso, I've now got a hard piece ready to go and a perfect frame. So you're away. Um, if you're looking to frame work because you want to present your work, a great place to start is op shops. Oh, that's a second hand shop. Because you can go in there and find um, work that no longer has a home. I know I know painting over other pieces of artwork is, you know, it, it's a tough barrier to get over, but actually if you can find artwork that no longer has a home and no longer has love and are selling it for two dollars at a second hand shop and you can grab it and then use that to fund your practice, that's kind of cool. Um, and that's actually recycling in a really fun way. So, op shop, charity shop, yes. So uh, that's that's what you're after. Um, yeah, opportunity shops, yes. Yeah, okay. Sorry, guys. So op shops, opportunity shops, secondhand shops, thrift stores. I think we call them overseas. How do you prep an already painted canvas? Um, I get some light sandpaper very very light sandpaper I give it a brisk all over and what that does is it scours the surface so it turns whatever textures on the surface to a slightly abrasive surface and then once I've got that abrasive surface I get a gesso now if you're worried about the quality of the canvas you've got or the surface you've got quality gesso is great if you're not worried because you can see it's acrylic or oil paints and it's going to be very adhesive already I'll just grab the cheapest gesso you can find and slap a coat over the top all you're doing is making sure there's no weird, nothing weird happens. Because you don't, you don't know, the, the surface of a canvas can be an enigma. So if you throw the gesso coat on top of it after a quick sand, then you've got a nice white surface that's hopefully pretty flat, and you're good to go. If it's not flat, just keep gessoing it till it is. Um, or sand it a bit more. Depends what it is. If it's a canvas, you can't sand it too much because you'll go through the fabric. But if it's a hardboard, go to town. Get your sandpaper out and really go nuts because you're not going to go the whole way through a wood board. Um, half time. Half time, Ricky. So 50-50. Alright. Hey, Valicia. Welcome. Sorry for disappearing on you. Camp for America NZ, follow the host. Thanks, Camp for America. Appreciate you. <laughs> hey, Emma. Artists in Australia, that's cool. What do you paint? Abstract? Or do you paint, uh... Ooh. Still life, real life, contemporary artist. <laughs> Good morning. Um, it's actually going on almost lunchtime now. So, since we're coming up on lunchtime, I'll say good afternoon. 
but uh, yeah, it is going real well. The rain's a pain. I don't know why every time we try and do a stream, we get rained out, but uh, in this case here, I was down there. I had a lovely little view. There was like greenery around. There was like a little plant here and things. It was just, I had it teed up really well. And then rain got me. So I'm up here on the veranda. And the poor flatmates need to put up with me yakking about everything I yak about to do with painting. I mean, lucky them actually, lucky them. I have a huge painting that was left in my apart, in your apartment. It's like a Jay Pollock. Ooh, in black and white, and it need color. I'll tell you what, add some color to it. Get some paint and do it. You got punch in your eye like, wow. I'm so sorry to hear that, but yeah. No, join in here and we'll uh, give you a soothing time. Sorry that happened to you, it's no good. Do you ever use a palette? No. No, I sort of enjoy getting uh, random shapes like this one. This is a lid off a Tupperware container. Um, actually, it's from the car. It was a first aid kit. Tupperware container being used as a first aid kit. And I thought I need something. And since it's acrylics, this is all right because I can actually wash this and then uh, reuse it for its actual job. Um, so, Can actually swap brushes here guys this one's getting too big um but plates plates what i love the most fuse plates that's the most fun my painting looks very complicated it sort of is um on one level it's definitely complicated on another level it's just really really simple um Hyper is painting to put me off drawing art. Yeah, Tina, that can really do it in, but uh, it doesn't all have to be like that. You can uh, Fleetwood Mac that and go your own way. Because actually, people don't, uh, in terms of painting them, sometimes it's not very pleasurable to paint hyper-realistic work, but it's also always not that pleasurable to look at. Um, sometimes it's special stuff. Um, wild emotional stuff. Thanks, Felicia. I do love that Kiwi. <laughs> um, and sometimes when you go to an art gallery, it's not the hyper-realistic work that speaks to you. It's the stuff that actually, I don't know, it's the fun stuff, the stuff you can sort of form a connection with, you can see what the artist is trying to do. You don't get a sermon out of it, but you, uh, yeah, you can connect. around Bilbao there's the Guggenheim there and in the Guggenheim they have a section which is a whole bunch of um, oh, what were they post contemporary artists post modern I don't know what they were but they basically they had a movement they were just trying to be fun and their artwork is very simple it's done on cheap things like like big stretch pieces of fabric or just boards they could find and it's just really fun and that's all they were trying to do um, and you can go in there, and although the artwork's revered in a gallery now, and it's really important, at the, like, at the time, that's all they were doing. I work with UV Reactive. Huh, interesting. Don't really know what to call it. That's fun, though. I don't fully understand what's going on there, but I'm intrigued. UV Reactive Acrylics. So they change in the sun. Can you... Can you easily show it? Can you send me pictures of it? Because that'd be cool. Able to draw really young winter art school. Nice. Nice. I've never much resonated with the drawings. I like color so much. Just really love using color. But uh, a lot of respect for those who like graphite. Definitely. I studied cubism and abstract art. Yeah. Yeah. I spent most of my time in art school doing period, uh, looked into art, it was the Pre-Raphaelites, so they were a group of people who um, loved Renaissance artwork, or well, like the style of it to a degree, and they made a whole bunch of artwork which was 
unconventional subject matter for the time, but done in a very conventional style. So, popular. Glows under a black light. Okay, that's fun. G'day, happy Sunday. Um, glows under a black light. That is funky. that I'm moving into and um, I'd like to get down there in the grass but it might rain so we're up here I'll add you on Insta and send you some stuff yeah thank you very much I look forward to it um, I'll check it obviously after this but, uh... hey Evelyn <laughs> g'day guys um, it is going well and yeah this is a fun piece it's it's coming together but when it comes to the style at any given stage, we could make it better, or we could ruin it, and so we're just non-stop running that risk. I'm giving offered water from inside, but we're golden with this coffee. Um, I might actually, well it's not actually raining guys, I'm going to move this just a little bit more this way. Let's go. Let's go some more paint. What's that comment? A good artist knows when to stop. Alright, I'm a mediocre artist because I trip up. <laughs> I've uh, had a few works that I've gone too far on and then I had to pull them back and I've gone too far again and I've pulled them back. Um, they're, they're actually both on the website, Aboriginal. I sent him too far three times. And there's a one there called No Name, sent him too far three times as well. Gave up on them, went too far, thought I'd ruined it, had to slowly bring it back, came back, did it again. Wild journey. There's the palette. That's what we're working with. All the colors with a whole bunch of uh, gloss medium poured over the top. Thanks guys. Um, so, this style always resonated with me, doing this kind of messy, primal, abrupt, colourful style that uh, you can definitely see it in my early high school work. Um, but it wasn't really until after university that I started doing it, so I'd always do it, but keep it on a leash, if that makes sense. And so the actual result, you need to fully commit or the art doesn't come off just right. Thanks, Frank. Big fan of these pants. From Chicago, from an op shop. They cost me $8. Big fan of op shopping. Hey, Mike. How you doing? <laughs> Welcome. Yeah, Christopher. We're outside. Um, sorry for disappearing on everyone, too. I... Uh, yeah, was doing this and that. Um, I went to the studio and it's an artist collective. So there's a bunch of us working in the same space. And so I went in there intending to go live yesterday and there was a bunch of other artists there and I ended up talking with them and doing things and um, didn't actually end up going live. So that's on me guys. But uh, now that I've introduced myself and said hi, I'll do better next time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, but I do try. If like, there's a couple of sessions where I will actually, um, uh, yeah, just be going solo. Sometimes, if I need, to, I need a vibe check. Is that what the kids are saying these days? When I need to actually make sure I'm back on form, um, I'll put on music, um, which I can't do right here because it's copyrighted. But I'll put on music I'll get in my own space 
and I'll do a long session just with me. But uh, typically for that, I'll always do uh, my own sort of work. So projects of passion. And the reason I'll do that in private is because if you've got a commission being made, you like to be able to see it coming together, which is fun. And uh, that gives you your own private space, you know, which is fun. But as much as I can, I want to share every part of it with you guys, the process from start to finish, so you guys can sort of see that and be a part of it with me, which is fun. Why so dress up today? Um, right, I've been getting too sloppy with the paint. It's been going everywhere, and I've been saying that if you do start getting too sloppy with the paint and getting things all over the place, uh, dress nice. So these are the regular pants that I normally wear, but the shirt is completely white, and so this is subconsciously making me sharpen up with where I put paint. And I may make a mistake, granted, but while I'm doing it, that's got me sharpening up where I actually put paint and how I do it. Especially while we're doing the detail on a picture. <laughs> hey, I'm good. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, ideally guys, um, I do have a couple of commissions coming up that I want to get finished early December and so there's going to be a bit more of a live schedule um, yeah so I've got no promises to make yet but that is on the horizon um, studio or I mean weather permitting this, is, this rain is getting silly I invite you to Art Students League in NYC as my guests. I'd love to go, that sounds fantastic. I love New York City. I've been there, mm, uh, I don't know what, that was a fun comment, I just missed it. I wear makeup on days and try not to cry so I won't mess up my makeup. Ah yes, clever. Um, I'm sorry I go through those days, but uh, I hope we're doing a little bit here right now to improve this day for you. Um, lost my trail of thought there though on the other thing. How much does your work cost wise? Um, so it chops and changes. Uh, it depends who's after it, um, what they're after. So I say, no, not depends who's after it, everyone's equal, but it depends uh, what someone's after. So, um, with this piece here, I'm keeping costs as low as possible. So this is a second-hand canvas with a second-hand frame. And uh, yeah, I am in Auckland, hello. I'll see you later, bye. Um, and, but if it's a fresh one, so if I'm, if I'm getting a canvas and I'm stretching onto it and I'm painting the canvas and framing it and things, these things all stack up in terms of cost. Um, and then it depends on what you're after. Do you want something more realistic where you can make out the subject? Or are you after something that's more, uh, um, abstract because abstract can happen faster um, it's it's still mentally trained but it can happen faster um, so depending on what you're after it chops and changes but if you go through the regular pictures which are normally about 900 by 1200 um, usually around the 800 US mark is about where they sit then you have the shipping on top of that, but it, it chops and changes. How long does it take you to do a painting? Um, I still have the girl on the horse, so there's a, there's a couple commissions going. I've given the girl on the horse a little bit of a break. And the reason I've given a little bit of a break is it's getting just stuck on features that I need to fix up on. Um, if you look at a painting too much, you start to over-focus on things, and that ruins the overall vibe of the painting. So we weren't doing that just yet on that painting, but we were getting dangerously close to it. So I've swapped to another commission, and uh, I'll attack this one for a bit, and then once I'm actually feeling more open-minded about girl and horse, I'll go back to it. That's the plan. G'day, Claire. Uh, that's cool, Christopher. Um, definitely reach out. There's a website there in the bio. Um, you can contact me via the, <laughs> the contact me page, or you can, uh, Christopher, um, definitely reach out. There's a website there in the bio. 
um, you can contact me via the, <laughs> the contact me page, or you can uh, contact me on Instagram or TikTok. All of it's fine. Um, yeah. Usually my favorite way to work is to make the artwork faster, so make it more abstract, and keep the costs low, and then try and disseminate more artwork to people. Um, because I don't believe to have a really, you know, you can get a big expensive piece in your house, and that's fun. Murals are fun. Giant three meter tall works are fun. Part of my favorites, but uh, I think putting artwork in people's hands is something special because every day, if you get the right piece that connects with you, every day is just a little bit better for you. Um, and for me, it's pretty wholesome to be part of improving that day. So, was it a train whistle? Uh, no, I think it's a bird. Um, or it might have been, but I just completely missed it. It might have been. Is it a canvas? It's not, it's hardboard. Oh, it's canvas stretched over hardboard, so it's like a cheating canvas. So it's not hardboard and it's not canvas. It's canvas stretched on hardboard. It's simultaneously both and neither. <laughs> And uh, where'd you learn to paint? I learned to paint from a very young age. Um, my mother saw me playing around with creative things and thought that boy may have a future with paint. And so she pushed me into private tutors and she pushed me into art school and taking up art more in high school and things. And I was really lucky in that sense. Um, I say private tutors like it was really fancy. It was just little kids around a room and we'd like paint pictures all together. But uh, at the end of the day, I didn't appreciate it at the time, but that was the biggest game changer for me. Um, sort of like learning to ride a bike or snowboarding when you're younger. Um, once you've done it, then you always know. Um, yeah. But that doesn't mean if you've never painted before that you can't learn. Of course you can. Of course you can. Thanks, professional. They are great pants. Chicago from an op shop. For nine dollars. Eight dollars, nine dollars, one of the two. We should have our fans wear location paint with you, painting with a pro profile. <laughs> you could do. Um, I used to do, and I've always enjoyed the uh, wine and paint nights, if you've ever done one of those before, where you get an artist who there's a picture or a group of pictures and you all paint together. And so um, the artist yarns about, I don't know, you're painting fruit or something, it's not really relevant. You're all just enjoying using paint, putting color on canvas, everything's set up for you. So there's no supplies that you do or don't have because everything's just there. And there's wine, or better still, there's a bar, an open bar, and maybe they're making cocktails. There's nothing better than trying to throw around some paint with your mates, enjoying yourself, and then wandering up to a bar and grabbing a screwdriver, or a Bloody Mary, or I don't know what your taste is. Whatever you want, it's all there. Have fun. <laughs> That's a wholesome evening. You'll bring some KFC wings and Starbucks? He's welcome, or she's welcome, with an express. Now you're talking my language. Now <laughs> you're talking my language. Um, I'm a big fan. I've done those drunk. Yeah, that's a, that's the sort of the best way to learn how to paint sometimes um, because you drop your inhibitions or you drop your... Uh, there's a lot of, especially if you're in a room full of people and you're painting, there's a lot of uh, uh, self-esteem. No, you get self-conscious and you don't get into that flow state and really... It's sort of like dancing. If you think you're a bad dancer or you think people are watching you, you're gonna be very bad at dancing or you're not gonna to want to dance the way you dance. But uh, if you feel comfortable, or maybe after a few drinks, you suddenly feel more confident being you. And it's similar with painting. So those wine and paint nights really help for that. <laughs> oh, thanks Josie, appreciate you. Um, are you making a living from being a full-time artist? I'm not, not at all. 
Um, well, not at all. I'm, I'm not. What I do is I, uh, I've had a full-time job for a long time, um, which has been really fun. And I was stepping back from that job when COVID hit, and that threw me back into it full-time. So I was like, right, can't leave. I've got to sort all this stuff out, make all this work. And then uh, after COVID sort of started dissipating, I've slowly done this transition. So I've always been doing about 15 hours or so painting with about 45 on a full-time job. And now we're rotating. So we're on about 30, 30. And I want to switch it more. So it's about 50 hours painting and about 10 hours on my old job, which is uh, would be the dream. That's about where we want to be. Painting a white shirt is brave. Yeah, it is, Tyler. It's, uh, it's a dangerous carry-on, but... Uh, yeah, I'm a big fan. Is it important to have high materials, so it's like good materials, to sell expensive arts using soft pastels? I would love to tell you, but uh, I unfortunately know nothing about soft pastels. Um, it's not my area of expertise. I had some amazing friends in art school who knew all about them, and they would create some lifelike, fantastic works um, but for me, I never touched it. I'm an acrylic boy. I'm a uh, oil boy from way back. And like probably my expertise come in with acrylic additives. So what you can add to acrylics to actually make them funky on a canvas. There, I've got your back. But soft pastels, you're better with anyone else's advice. Um, I would assume, whoop. I would assume Sorry guys, I'm gonna bring you back a little bit here. As it starts hammering down. We're under cover now. We just need we just needed a foot. <laughs> I would assume that with soft pastels, because it's not a thick medium, that you are needing to have uh, more uh, quality uh, products to work with. <laughs> thanks Jack and thanks Summer appreciate that but yeah soft pastels are, soft pastels are fun though they like the colourful version of uh, graphite sketches but, uh, yeah I just love colour lots of colour all over the show have at it and uh, that's where I thrive so it's cool when your strength and your passion lines up. So I've got a passion for colorful things. My strength is color. It's all perfect. <laughs> Thanks, Summer. Appreciate the rose. Um, I missed a comment there. I did go to art school, yes. Um, but Australian artists, where are you from? We are in Auckland right now. So this is... Uh, Auckland and the studio is also in Auckland but usually I'm painting in uh, Tauranga so there's a, there's a little studio there too it's not um, the one in Tauranga it's a family house so the studio is actually the modified garage so it makes it sound super like the big total on studio. It's not like that at all. The one here in Auckland is an artist collective. So there's a group of us artists in the same space. And the one in Tauranga is a modified garage. Be it a very cool modified garage, but a modified garage. So yeah, that's honestly, if I was to recommend anything for a studio, I would do the, uh, the, 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 the garage. And the reason why is you can lift the garage door. So if you're using um, things that are a bit more fumy, even by adding too much additives to uh, acrylics, you can always just uh, open the garage door and the whole room can air out. So that's banger. Big fan of that. Um, you've heard me say it before, guys, but I'll say it again. If you are enjoying yourselves and uh, you want to spread some love around the world, Feel free to, I'm not sure where the button is, but uh, give the stream a share and put this little rectangle square that we're all sharing together in front of more people. That's awesome. Um, 
Oh, sorry about that, Chris. And thanks, Crank. You're the best. Um, yeah. So a modified garage. Honestly, if I was going to build a brand new studio, that is never going to happen. <laughs> I doubt that's ever going to happen. But if I was to build one from scratch, like from, from the ground up, I would have a big side on it like a garage door that would come up and, uh, yeah, allow the whole room to vent. So that would be that would be the go. That would be the go. Thanks, guys. Um, where are we at there? And uh, I'm trying to glance back to catch the comments, guys, but if I miss any, and you had a question, uh, feel free to message me. Promise I won't ghost you. Um, and we can answer it. Garage is awesome. Yeah. Love the wicker lamp. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's wild, actually. That giant lamp's hilarious. Big fan of it. Um, let's have a look see. I missed a comment there. Painting? Long time. Since I was two. Um, on and off. Uh, yeah, the white shirt's aggressive. It's a very aggressive thing. Because I wanted to encourage myself to paint cleaner today. So, dress smart, paint smart. That's the plan. Thanks for the rose. You're the best. It's great ambience. Yeah, it is. It is. Um, there's less birds here in uh, Auckland as there is in um, Tauranga. Which is alright. It's a bit of a pity. Um, yeah. So that's wholesome. Um, I don't know if I hear any twoies around here though, guys. There was definitely more twoies in... Totonga. Oh, thanks for the uh, paper crane, Christopher. Uh, Chris, appreciate you. What kind of art style is this? Uh, a little bit of impasto, a little bit of an impressionism, a little bit of expressionism, a little bit of a uh, little bit of all the things. We're just using art as a medium to sort of have a bit of primal fun, play with some colour chuck some texture down and uh, go from there yeah I miss the birds too actually um, that's going to be something I really enjoy and miss about the Totonga studio <laughs> thanks Aussie appreciate you too I hope you're looking after yourself in what I assume is Australia unless you've got that name and you're somewhere else in the world which is also fine you do you One thing I I don't struggle with, but I typically neglect when I'm painting, is I, uh, I do sell the paintings. They're on my website in the bio, or you can find them on, uh, you can miss me on that, that Instagram or TikTok or wherever. Um, but the website's the best place to go. So, patterns. I struggle with patterns, because when I'm trying to paint patterns, I see the pattern. And you have to not do that. I find if, you, if there is a pattern on the work, like a dress or a chicken shirt, you have to just acknowledge the shapes and the colours and the tones that you see. South Carolina, welcome. Um, it takes longer because there's a lot to acknowledge, but uh, you'll get an overall better result. I've recently started to paint, uh, but not well. Um, any tips? Well, first off, I'd cut that not well part out. Um, a lot of the time when you start painting, you can spend the whole time beating yourself up about not being good. That's silly. Don't do that. Um, spend your time wondering about how much you're enjoying yourself. Uh, because at the end of the day, what really reflects itself in a painting is did the artist actually enjoy making it? 
I hate it when I look at a piece and I can see that the person making it didn't get a flow state or an experience from doing it. But, but, if you can look at a piece and think that that artist really had a good time expressing themselves and creating something and wanting to share something, um, and you can feel that from the artwork, whether it's technically brilliant or not, you can experience that as another human being. So that's wholesome. Uh, Mummy, I did not. Um, I know, shocking of me. I'm colorblind, so I love looking at paintings of my friends and fighting over what colors which. <laughs> that's awesome. You could become the uh, Beethoven of uh, painting. And your colorblindness could be what makes all your paintings super special. You never know. I just take the soup. Um, thanks guys, I appreciate that. And sorry about the, uh, if the rain's a bit noisy, I'm sorry about that, but it's, we're just under the shelter, so I'll be fine, but, uh, I wanted to be down there, but I can't be, because the rain's hammering down. I wanted to be down there, but I can't be, because the rain's hammering down. We're just going to keep on adding little bits of paint here and there. Yeah, Sha, this is brave. Where's Gaga when you need hoop? I don't get that. Um, but yeah, so the white shirt is because if you've been on it since the start, I'm so sorry, but uh, dress smart, paint smart. So if you dress the part, you will get less paint everywhere, even if you're doing wild abstract work. It's weird. Like subconsciously, you do it less. No jeans today. True, true. Well, they're... No, they're like a sporty dress panty thingy. I'm a big fan of them. They, um, they're a good fit. They're comfy, but they look professional. That's a, that's a win. Thanks, Charles. <laughs> Appreciate you. Um, so if you missed it at the start, all we're doing here, all I'm doing here is adding in these random assortment of colors. And the goal here is to mix it with this gloss medium so it goes transparent and then spread it everywhere so we've got a layering of colors we can get the last couple of wild patches in there and then afterwards i'm coming back with the whites and blacks and i'm uh, adding the last little bits of detail in there so this is probably one of the last two layers will be the go here but even when you get to a later stage don't be afraid to change proportions or move stuff around. Sorry, there's a comment there. Is there, a, oh, is there a form of painting that you prefer to paint? This is my favorite way of painting. So I'm very lucky that the style that uh, goes well is my favorite. And thanks for the finger heart, Jerry. You're the best. Um, soon guys I'm going to be starting a bunch of uh, portraits which will be fun because portraits are pretty wild but the way I do them is really different I do a lot of um, I don't do any starting guidelines I just just crack into it and slowly let the face come right as I go um, so when we do that That'll be over the next eight to 10 days. Um, yeah, 
I'm looking forward to it. Where did I study art? I did it at Massey in Wellington, New Zealand, and I did it in Otago in New Zealand. New Zealand. The rain in the background. Yeah, and uh, it's pretty relaxing. It's good. I'm a fan. We're not in the rain today, so it's not the uh, battles that we've had in the past, but it's working. I'm on oil paints, so these are, sorry, not oil paints, I'm on acrylic paints. Um, and look at that, got some on my hand, made a mistake. Um, so, I have said in the past that while I'm painting outside, I should be using oils, but, but, breaking that rule today because I wanted to add acrylics because I can't get the oils here as transparency in the same way. Um, as transparent in the same way. Are there any other painters you connect with through TikTok? Um, there's a lot of painters on TikTok. And yeah, talk with a few of them. Um, talk with a lot of painters on uh, Instagram. Um, People everywhere. People everywhere. Ha! <laughs> Fighting over the color of my pants. So these pants are navy blue. Navy blue. They have got some green paint on them though, from a terrible miss that I've done. Uh, you're dressed like you're going out. Are you afraid to paint your paint on them? Nah, and I'm pretty confident, but uh, look, I might make a mistake. It may happen. But uh, I'm fairly confident that I've got this on lock. Now that's not quite right here. That's supposed to come down through here. There we go. That's more like it. And then this part here. Yeah, there we go. Now we're talking. Now how we're talking. Sorry guys, let me just cut this in, and then I'll be with you again. Here we go. Perfect. What brand is the paint, paint Rhiannon? Um, I've shown it off earlier, but I'll grab it again. Hey Heidi. Um, so this is, it's new for me. I don't normally use it, but I'm a huge fan. It's called uh, Abstract Innovative Acrylic. And it comes in little like sauce bags. So big fan. Uh, favorite gallery? Probably the Guggenheim. I know it's really basic, but uh, Guggenheim is really funky because they get a lot of really fun artwork in and I'm making it sound like I'm an expert on the Guggenheim, but I've been here once and I thought this is really wholesome, like uh, the ability for someone who knows a, only a little bit about art can come here and really appreciate everything that's going on. So Guggenheim and Bilbao. Uh, yes, so gesso is fantastic. Um, I just get cheap gesso, just the big punnets of it. And I like to use gesso to check down as a base coat, especially if I'm painting board. And the reason that doing it on board is great is because usually with the wood, um, it'll soak up paint straight away and make it quite hard to spread clean strokes across the canvas. So if that's happening to you, giving a wood a coat of gesso first makes it all stick better and flow better over the surface. Usually to speed things up, I just apply just over the rag. Just rub it on, have it done. If so, just close. The paint will come out, could be wrong. Uh, depends, if it's oil paints, you sort of need to do some damage control. But with these acrylics, absolutely, paint will come out of these. If this gets on this, it'll be fine. If I wash it fast enough, of course. 
Doesn't it also keep it from drying as fast as well? Uh, do you mean the gesso? Um, if you wait for the gesso to dry, I don't, I've never really seen it have that much of an effect. I do have some things like uh, liquid for the... I do have some things like liquid for uh, oil paints, which help them dry faster. But uh, in terms of acrylic paints, I find they dry so fast anyway, I've never really worried about it. I really enjoy painting is that a method paint that I don't know. Is there a method paint that I don't that method to paint that I don't know about? Um, well, one of the first things to do if you treat painting like dancing is to if I was teaching you how to dance and you said you were no good at dancing, I'd want to get your confidence up. So I'd want to get you dancing like no one's watching and get you confident. And if we got there then uh, once you could dance like no one was watching, slash paint like no one's watching, you'd be able to get some new moves. So let technique come second. Worry about having fun while you're painting. And yeah, everything else will just fall into place. That's what I reckon. Do you sell prints of your paintings? I do not. No, I just sell the paintings. I have dabbled with prints, but uh, yeah, I've typically just sold the paintings to go to. Sorry guys, one moment. That's to there, that's to there. Just moving that around. There we go. <laughs> Thanks, Anna. Yeah, we're doing it very colourful. What you is good or bad in many ways? That is very fascinating to me because it is showing how to differ what you... Yeah, so... Honestly, as long as you're having fun. No one wants to watch someone dance in pain. Um, you want to see someone dance and have a great time. Just in the same way you want artwork to... Um, you want to know that the artwork be made. In the same way you want artwork to... Um, you want to know that the artwork be made be made in a wholesome, fun way, or the person who lo made it loved what they were doing. And if you, can, if you can see that and feel that, that makes it more special. That's what I reckon. Um, is my fly open? My fly is not open, but thank you. I'll double check that. I thought people also use gesso to stop acrylics from drying as fast is what I meant. Um, I think they might. They might do. I don't have experience with that. Um, whenever it comes to acrylics, I've just assumed drying times are fast, and I haven't really looked at it more than that. Typically because I'm very seldom doing one work intensely, I'm doing multiple works, so you'll do work on it, you'll put it to the side, just start another one, and you'll come back to that one five or six days later. We're not British. We're not British. This is New Zealand. so. New Zealand is to the south, near the southeast of Australia. We're like their little brother. Thanks, Elding. Appreciate that. Yeah. That's a good way to describe it. Vivid and abstract. That's where I want to be. Um, good morning from Malaysia. Welcome, Lewis. We're a bit early on this colour here. But I am cutting it at the moment with some white. To get a bit more detail in there. Shopperist, can I be Mrs. Gower? I'm so sorry. You cannot be. That place is taken. I'm sure you're lovely though. You'll find Mr. Right. Right, so with the white, we're going to cut in here and add in some finer detail. This is going to make the overall subject easier to see. 
But we want to make sure we add in what we see, not what I think I see. So there's a big difference. Um, this is my favorite one of yours so far. How long has it actually been? <laughs> Thanks, Lady Flame. Um, so this is probably going to be about an eight to 10 hour piece, just because I wanted to capture a lot of the detail and there's a lot going on. Um, things like a checkered shirt and things. I want to nail the basics on this one. Um, it'll still be vivid and abstract, but I want to get in there close and get that detail. Um, so I'm going to say 10 hours. 10 hours. Oh no, Aussie Astro. Don't do that. Don't drink, don't drink pineapple if you're allergic. That's, that's silly. Um, look after yourself. Ashley Robinson. Well done. This is Lane Frost. So uh, big props to you. If I could give you back a little like rose or kiwi or like the little gift things, I would do that right now because you deserve one. Oh, moonshine. I reckon you could. Honestly, if there was a barrier to doing that moonshine, that's your attitude. In a wholesome way. Um, if you're enjoying hanging out here too though, guys, um, don't be afraid to, I'm not sure where the button is on your screen, but you can hammer the share button and uh, you can try and spread some love and make a few other people's days better, because that'd be wholesome. I had a blast, I have a blast, perfect, I'm glad to hear it. And I always love seeing how many flags pop up, that's always fun. If you're wondering where this is, this is New Zealand. And one day, one day I'll get some nice weather. When the nice weather comes, we can paint outside, in the wild outdoors. But for right now, we'll just hang out under the shelter. This is one of the smaller um, canvases that I've worked on. So this is the this would be one of the smallest works in the studio right now. It's a mixture. So a lot of oil, but I'm currently going at it with acrylics. So that's where I'm at. <laughs> Thanks, Shakira. Imagine if that was the Shakira. She's just taking a break from the fame and crazy life that she leads to watch a Kiwi paint on TikTok. Hello from Malaysia. I think you're the uh, second Malaysian we've had on the stream today. You're very, very welcome to be here. Meg, I am lucky to have you here. <laughs> Thanks, Moonshine. Um, yeah, I will try and also, if you are trying to learn to paint, um, I've had a, a lot of people reach out to me and say they'd like to paint the same time I'm painting. Um, and so I realized me just leaping on live out of the blue is a little bit niggly for you guys. So as we go forward, hey from Montreal, I'll try and get a bit more of a schedule together. So if you are picking up some painting supplies and trying to put some paint on canvases, we can do it at the same time in two random places around the world, which could be fun. Um, Lucy does it, um, but I have been leaping on randomly, so I've been missing out on Lucy. So wherever she is, I hope she's well. Um, and Belisha, are you still here? I haven't seen comments from Belisha. She didn't say bye. Um, I love the painting too. If you'd like a session, um, I've done private sessions, but I usually prefer doing group sessions because you can get more information into more people and look after everyone. 
because we're talking about trying to get as many people as happy as possible so that's the win uh, so the bigger the group the better off you are but um, I do sell the artwork you can go on the website the links in the bio there and you can also message me directly if you've got something like a commission or you want to understand more about uh, pricing or what you might be after there is pricing on the website too the big killer is shipping so it depends where you are if you're in New Zealand it's pretty straightforward if you're in uh, America or uh, Europe it's a bit more complicated but it doesn't mean that you're out of the question um, it just means there's extra steps you're focused on your goal fantastic I'm proud of you smash that goal I don't know what the goal is I don't need to know I'm just glad you're on top of it Yeah, that would be cool, Moonshine. That would be cool. Um, I will let you know. There's a bit of an Auckland following, so it might come into fruition. But uh, for now, you can just get me through this. <laughs> Cheers, Alex. Alex, Alex Taylor's out there just spreading out some love. I wish one day I learn art from you. Please give me your autograph on it. Um, that's all possible. That's all things that can happen. I think I read that right. Do you grind off picks like when I'm doing your sketch? Um, so, I typically work off a picture to do a lot of work that I do. When I don't have a picture, a picture's sort of like an anchoring point for me. It brings me into a, 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 some normality. I don't have a picture to work off what happens I just go on a wild primal escapade and my abstract goes way too abstract um, yeah I just send it so I typically find a picture's good as a limitation for me because it keeps this vivid wild primal colorful style in just a small amount of check um, oh we'll see you later moonshine Look after yourself. I'm sorry if you've already left. I was just sitting there rabbiting on about something. So, see you later. Thanks, Blessed. You are the best. Cool, cool. Coming together. So, the colors we're adding, if you missed it earlier, are transparent. So you'll be able to see these underlying saturated colors through these more grays and the other fun colors that we're adding on top. So it's all fun. <laughs> Thanks guys. Maybe more violet. Yeah. I feel that. I'm on board. Yep. Okay. More violet. I do like to, especially in the final stages of a painting, that, blah, blah, I do like to, especially in the final stages of a painting, bring in some really saturated primary blues, primary reds, and primary yellows, and really pull out those base colors in a picture. Um, yeah. And then during the work, I work with a lot of purples, a lot of reds, and a lot of pinks. Um, yeah. I don't know why. It's just where I'm at. Uh, have you ever abandoned a painting you weren't enjoying? Patrick, oh my lord. All the time. Um, I'll persevere to the death though. So I'll abandon the painting and say you're not like you, you're ruined. But maybe we can bring you back. And you go at it with a new mind frame from a different perspective, you get wild, you get thicker with the paint, you do all sorts of stuff. And I was saying earlier, two examples of that on the website is Aboriginal and No Name. Those two paintings, I gave up on both of those. I do like broccoli. Yeah. I gave up on both of those uh, three times. We could do that, Christian. <laughs> um, thanks, Patrick. Um, so, 
with those paintings, I got into a place where I thought, I've ruined this painting, or it's not coming together, it's not going to come together, it's done. I put it to the side of the studio, it was going to get painted over and turn white to then get a new picture put on it, because I wasn't going to be able to finish it. And so, I don't, Anna, I just speak English. Um, little bits, but like, fluently, just English. Um, and so, I left inside the studio, I'd come in the next week or the next day, and I'd go, you know what? Let's give you one more chance. And I'd slap some paint on it and see where I could take it, and it would start coming together. And then, just as it was coming together, it would then fall off the wagon again. And when it fell off the wagon, I'd have the same process where I'd put it beside the studio, I'd give up on it, I'd leave it there, and then I'd come, yeah. Anyway, three times for both those works. And um, what that, the moral of that story is, or what I take away from that is, uh, I'm an average singer. I can sing in the shower very loudly, but uh, yeah, painting's my skill. Um, sorry if that was random there, guys. I'm trying to answer comments as I'm giving this yarn, but sorry, the moral of the story was that um, development of abstract art or expressive art is not um, linear. So it doesn't go from being bad to good or empty to finished. It goes up and down like this the whole time. And so sometimes when you put on a coat or some days you'll go in there to paint or you'll pursue your creative process and you'll actually take steps backwards. But as long as in the long term, what will occur, you'll take three steps forward and one step back. Now some days will be the step back and other days will be the three steps forward. And that's creative process. So that's what happened with those works. So sorry, Patrick, long yarn. Um, thanks for the panda. Um, and yeah, I have abandoned works, which I've later come back to and saved. Um, thanks guys. <laughs> We're in New Zealand, so this is Auckland. Auckland is not New Zealand's capital, but it's the biggest city in New Zealand about 1.6 million people which is 25 percent of new zealand's population don't quote me on any of that do you like latin music yeah i do i do i like latin music i like country music i like jazz is pretty cool i like hmm. what else do i like I don't much like what's on the radio, guys. I don't mean to be a bit of a hipster with it, but I don't like what's on the radio. I like, um, yeah, Spotify's great. You just can go track down wild little random things. Um, and that's always wholesome. To quote Shakira. <laughs> yeah, so the New Zealand accent is um, if you watched Flight of the Concords, that show from back in the day, um, the New Zealand accent is a little bit robotic. So the Aussies have more expression, they go up and down with their voice and things, but for me, uh, or New Zealanders, it's more like a, a monotone drone where we just, yeah. But that's our accent, and I like it. Now you got Shakira stuck in my head. Thank you for that. <laughs> Hello from Quebec, Tennessee. Welcome. I hope to teach two in New Zealand. That would be cool. That would be very cool. I hope your dream comes true. I am backing you. Love Flight of the Concords, yeah. What a show. What a show. So, uh... It's one of those things I've gone back to watch. I've been like, that is as funny as I remember it. Um, another one that's really good, because it's got uh, Ricky Gervais, who's the um, their manager in Flight of the Concords. Ricky Gervais um, is in the movie called What We Do in the Shadows. What We Do in the Shadows, it's done by the same director who did, who did one of the Thor movies, uh, Taika Waititi, if I'm saying that right and he's in the what we do the shadows he's the leader of a, a pack of werewolves which sounds like a silly premise it is and it's hilarious so he's he's the leader of a pack of werewolves 
you got Tiger Waititi and the guy from Flight of the Concords as vampires. And yeah, anyway, they did the. It, it's funny because they take all the funniest jokes around it. Like, um, uh, I won't give any spoilers, um, but there's really not any spoilers in the thing. It's just a whole bunch of funny skits. But uh, the vampires do a flyby and scare all the werewolves, who then like werewolf out and rip all their clothes. And then as the vampires are flying off, dusting all their ripped clothes and Ricky Gervais is just like, oh, because it, that would be exactly what happened if you were a werewolf and you were given a surprise and you turn into a werewolf and then all your nice clothes are ripped that would be very inconvenient and when you went back to human form you'd be more exasperated than anything so that's uh you didn't need a whole yarn about that but you got one I'm sorry it's fine just toxic by Britney Spears stuck in your head <laughs> yeah I remember that song on SingStar who has done PlayStation 2 SingStar? Because that was cool. That was a time to be alive. Where are you from? We are in New Zealand. So this is... Auckland, New Zealand. And ah, oh, hi. And bang. This is a commission, so I'm just putting down one of the final two coats. I'm not sure which one it will be yet. We'll find out. Um, I'm just showing my age, but SingStar was the best. Yeah, SingStar was the best. <laughs> um, favorite place in Auckland? I like One Tree Hill. Um, yeah, there's not much going on there, but uh, it's cool. Um, also, what else is in Auckland? I like One Tree Hill. Yeah, that's all good. Who's Miss Collars? Colliers? To the North Shore. North Shore. Um, let me think here. I'm not sure where I. I'm still getting literate with uh, Auckland, so I'm bad with places and everything going on here. But uh, I'm getting the hang of it. So give me a few more weeks to get my bearings. I've just started getting to the uh, my friends' houses and the gym without using Google Maps, so big step in the right direction. <laughs> Today I almost made it. I missed the turn off, uh, I had to Google that, but uh, just about made it without any help, so proud of me. <laughs> Thanks for the uh, roses. Um, I do sell them, so if you want a painting, if you're in New Zealand, it's easier because there's very low shipping costs. But uh, if you want a painting, um, you can go on the website uh, and see what's available. And if you want a commission, there's also the ability to do that too. Now, if the specs on the website don't fit what you're after, we can do something personal for you. They're not the only things available. They're just pre-assigned commissions that we can do. Um, we, I can do. Um, and I can absolutely do something more custom for you. That's absolutely fine. Google Maps beats the books we had as kids. Yeah, right. Um, <laughs> yeah. You're like flicking through the pages and you'd be like, cheers, Joel. Um, you'd be like flicking through the pages trying to find like page 175 and you just open it up and uh yeah try and find where we were on the map that was hard case that's cool stacy group painting days like in uh auckland here that's funky definitely come along um the studio that i'm a part of the art collective had a day where they had a whole bunch of them um have you ever auctioned a painting? I haven't auctioned a painting before. Um, 
I'm not, <laughs> I'm not against it, I've just never done an auction. Um, so, went to the studio and the other the night before I got there, they'd had a few beers and things while they were painting. Really fun. They just had a, you know, nothing, not, no binge drinking, like, to the extreme, just all of them doing their artwork, having some fun, and having some beers. So that's wholesome. Good for them. Funky Cold Medina. I'm not sure what that is. Looks like art made in the streets of Brazil. Well, there we go. That is... I've never been on the streets of Brazil, but uh, there's art there like this. That's sort of cool. I'm actually proud to wear Okay. Here I am trying to look for art questions. You almost got me, guys. Um, so, what was I going to say? I lost my trail of thought. Um, also, guys. If you're having fun and enjoying being here with me, um, I would have really appreciate it if you shared this little random box with more people so I can spread love as far and wide as I can today. Otherwise, we can keep hanging out here. That's cool. I'm probably going to be here for another... Mm, not Australian. Kiwi. Kiwi. Um, probably going to be here for another, we'll see how this paint palette goes, an hour maybe. You should tour the US and Europe and paint stuff in beautiful spots, I'd love to Patrick. Um, the idea has crossed my mind, but uh, I'm going to tune out some work in the uh, new studio first, but I like the way you're thinking. I'm a big fan. Big fan. NYC waiting. True, true. I have shipped works over to New York City, but um, in hindsight, it's probably easier to actually um, go to New York City, hire a space, paint like make the canvases paint the works and then leave them there because shipping is a big thing <laughs> I have been to Canada so I went to Kelowna in British Columbia um, to a ski resort called Big White which was real fun really good fun I think I saw in your Instagram. Yeah, you would have. Uh, maybe. Maybe. Did I post about Big White on Instagram? I probably did. Probably did. Portugal. One day, but I have not yet. I have not yet. What medium? We are on acrylics. So it's acrylic paints and um, I'm mixing in gloss medium so it stays saturated. You draw her for a long time, no mod? I'm not sure. BC, welcome from BC, good to have you here. Um, sorry, just gonna tuck myself. <laughs> welcome from BC. Um, oh. Um, I would love to go back there and do a ski season again, but uh, we're a wee way off at this stage. Would I go back there and do it again? I definitely would. But, oh, life gets in the way, guys. I don't want to just run over there and do a ski season again. Maybe that part of my life's behind me. I'd probably go to Portugal first. Let's do that. Can't believe I'm wearing white. Yeah, it's high risk, but I'm, uh, I'm doing it.
That's not a bird, by the way. That's just me being an idiot. Did you ever paint your brother? I have painted my brother before a couple of times. And that was pretty fun. Um, not on a big canvas, but uh, I have painted him. Yuppadee, what flag is that? Or can someone tell me what flag is that? What's, what's Yuppadee? Uh, Gabriel, I do not have Twitter. I've just got nothing really interesting to say um, in a single sentence. Um, you gently lower it into a warm... I don't know what that is. Oh, ooh, yeah, hold on. That's not very nice. Um, we'll just put that one on mute. There we go. Your server TikTok channel TikTok lag. Really? Is it lagging? It says on the top right hand corner I've got good connection. Um, did an artist know? So I was actually in. Um, where was I? I was in France. No, yes. I, was, I crossed the border into France from somewhere. And this was a custard cup. So this is a custard cup. And anyway, it turns out it's dishwasher, microwave, and oven safe. And I emptied the custard out, and now it's my favorite coffee mug. So here I am. <laughs> Cheers, Crizzle. Appreciate that. Um, and I thought, I'll buy some more. But it was only from that one random place. It was like a dairy. It wasn't like a special brand or anything. I just couldn't find the brand back. I just couldn't find the brand anywhere else. So it's got a pretty little house stamped into it. A little bottom there saying it's microwave, oven, and everything safe. And it's a, just a gorgeous little cup. Couldn't be happier, guys. That's my coffee cup. And uh, it's an X custard cup. So it's a wild world. The wild west out there when it comes to these little coffee cups. So which flavoured coffee do you prefer during painting? Uh, so, everyone likes their own stuff, but uh, for me, I like long black. Always long black. Um, coffee's just more bitter. There's more going on. Um, I like a bitter coffee. I'm a, that's my flavor. Give me something really strong. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Ba -ba oh, uh. Thanks for the rose, Jocelyn. Appreciate you. Love strong coffee? Good. Good. And Georgie, love you too. You're the best. Bitter coffee? <laughs> yeah. Um, so, I have taken... I usually like espresso the most. That's um, very, very kiwi. So we put it in the machine. You push the button, it goes... And it makes the uh, shot. And then you throw off the milk and add it to it. But I just have the shot. Um, but... I've recently taken to saving some coins by doing filter coffee, which is when you get the plunger thing, you put the filter coffee into it, and then you let it sit there for a while and you push it down. Um, I like it. Uh, you can let it sit for a while. The ritual of pushing down on the thing, that's, uh, that's fun. Um, yeah. Props to filter coffee. Gold star from Sebastian. Mocha and coffee adventures. I used to love a mocha. I think that's how everyone starts off drinking coffee. They're out there smashing mochas. I think that sounds correct. And then you remove the uh, you remove the chocolate, and then you remove the uh, most of the foam. And then you go down to the, the uh, cappuccino, and then you go down to the flat white, and then you go down to 
the flat white with trim milk, and then you go down to the double shot flat white with trim milk, and then you go to the long black. And then you buy an espresso machine and start having those little pods. And it's the trajectory. During your study, what was your major and are you selling your paintings? So I started off doing fine arts the whole way through and then I moved into art history and philosophy in the later years. And then I do sell paintings. Um, you can see it on my website. The link is in the bio. Um, I don't know how you get there. Is it like my name there? Do you press it and then go over there? It's all wild, I don't know. Um, yeah, but if you go to the website, you'll see the available works, and then if you want a commission, um, like you pick some family members or something special that you want to depict, this is one of a guy who likes Lang Frost, um, we can work out something special for you. So, that's fun. Uh, I can't read that, but Brazilian flag, so that's fun. That is fun. I know... I was supposed to wait before I started adding whites and blacks in, but I couldn't. If you actually look at this paint palette, this is shocking, guys. So I said really clearly at the start, the first like hour, add the colors in with the transparency and then move on to the whites and blacks. If you look at the tray here, I've attacked the white. Now I haven't touched that color, that color, that color. Barely touched those three. I just, you start with a game plan and then you just change your mind. And do your own thing and that's painting so that's what we're doing um, I have got a couple of brushes here actually so one thing I do is I've got the uh, tape up here which I just stick a brush to so this one here was too big we're leaving that one up there we've gone to the what's this let's say four Four. I'm not sure what four stands for, but it's a four brush. So that's where we're at. A major in industrial design. Welcome. And Al, thank you so much for sharing the live. You're playing a big role in spreading love around the world today, because that's what we're here to do. If anyone jumps on here, gets to watch a little bit of art get made, and has their day improved in just a small little way, then I think we've all nailed it. I think we've done a very good job, so that would be wholesome. <laughs> that was a great comment. We did ex-cons from Britain. <laughs> Deary me. Uh, that was actually though, you're getting mixed. You're not mixed up, I'm just not Australian. Um, those are the ones you're referring to there. Um, we're like Australia's little younger brother. And uh, thanks Kay. Sharing the live, appreciate you. Um, New Zealand, yes. Yes, it is New Zealand. And thank you so much. I hope you have a great weekend too with uh, your family. Um, I am gonna be Actually, I'm not with my family, they're down in Tauranga. I'm going out to have dinner tonight with my partner's family. And it's an Italian themed dinner. And so we were in charge of dessert. So anyway, it turns out Italian desserts are basically just tiramisu and biscotti. Um, so I, we found a recipe to combine brandy snaps with some sort of pistachio cream uh, cheese thing and yeah so after I finish this I've got to get the ingredients mix it up into a bag so then I can um, squeeze it out into the brandy snaps tonight so that's the plan that's where I'm at so it's gonna be pretty exciting um, and it's turned out actually guys that uh, the rain didn't really come so we could have actually spent the whole time down there on the grass enjoying ourselves but instead we're up here um, and that's what we're up to it's 6 43 p.m on a saturday night in new york city 
go out to see a Christmas tree and all the lights on the 5th. That is very wholesome. I wish you all the best for going to view that Christmas tree. We do Christmas trees here in New Zealand, but it'll be nothing compared to what is about to happen, or what does happen, in New York City. I bet they've got a big one. I'm in Kimu and it's raining. I'm sorry to hear that. That's no good. Um, yeah. Look, I'm complaining saying I could have been down there. That's not true at all, to be fair. The, Odds on, I should absolutely be up here painting, um, as opposed to being out in the elements today. We'll get a sunny day though, guys. One day, we'll get a sunny day and we'll paint. From Malaysia. Beside, we are neighbours to, and I'm from Malaysia. Welcome from Malaysia. That's cool. It's 12.44 a.m. and it's snowing. 12.44 a.m. Where does that put you in the world? I'm not sure where that puts you. Twelve forty-four a.m. It's this time in New Zealand. Hi from Ireland. Welcome. Kiops. Oh my god. Hello. Hope you're doing well. Caribbean. That is wild. I like your rum. You do good rum in the Caribbean. Well, I don't know if you guys are the guys making it, but you're getting all the credit. <laughs> How long you've drawn that? A long time. I've been working on this for like oh, a while now. Is that another person from Malaysia? That's cool. Um, this one's been going for four or five hours. But... Uh, can you say that though when you're busy going backwards and forwards the whole time? It's probably more like two and a half hours of non-stop painting. Thanks, Sarah. Appreciate you. Um, layer by layer, slowly we're painting this. It didn't look this good at the start though. It, these things build themselves these things build themselves up slowly through layers. So when I started this, it looked far more rough and crazy and expressive and out of proportion, and it slowly comes into proportion. So oh, you don't want to judge art but you don't want to judge a book by its cover. Apply that to art. Um, yeah. Because like I was saying the other day, if you've got a painting and it's got ten layers to go on it. Um, it's not going to look good for the first layer, second layer, third layer. In fact, if it did, you'd stop and the painting's finished. But instead, you keep going to the tenth layer. So even on the ninth layer, it could still look not right. And if someone saw that and thought it was a finished product, they could have you on about that. But the idea is, let the artwork be finished. And until it's finished, just appreciate the person making it is having a good time. Um, I'm just watching this. Uh, uh, what in your style are you trying to achieve? Um, oh, probably, I mean, Jesus. What am I trying to achieve? Honestly, at a fundamental level, if you really nutted it down smaller and smaller and smaller to what, um, would be the key to everything we're doing here is that hopefully by doing your craft which in this case for me is painting and art that um, I can make someone someone else's day be it someone I know someone I care about or a stranger make their day a little bit better so can my craft bring joy to others if that's a yes then bang that's the number one. That's what we're trying to do here as a, as a fundamental level. And then going from there, we could ask ourselves, what are you trying to do visually with the painting? And I want to take a painting to a place where it's um, half, half subject matter. So you can see the picture. <laughs> Thanks guys. Um, half subject matter where you can see the picture, 
but the other half is primal paint being paint. So we're talking about brush strokes that look like brush strokes, color straight from the tube, thick um, strokes and abrupt movements in the work. And then uh, you've got this paint being primarily paint and a picture trying to present itself. And these two things are getting 50% each. So at no point does it go too much realism and at no point does it go too much abstract paint. It just battles at every single point. Um, battles, it's in harmony at every point. Because I think that primal, expressive, loose, thick paint, I think that is uh, what still makes physical art special. And if you don't have that, um, you'd have to, well, if I didn't have that, I'd have to ask why I was painting instead of using a digital tablet. Now, sorry if I uh, missed a few comments there while I was just on that yarn, but we got there. Uh, I've never, oh, I had, look, I've used oil colors, but like I say, I love that thick paint. I love adding mediums to the paint. I love it to go on there and have 3D texture to it. Um, I, yeah, and as I've seen digital work grow more and more, I've been thinking that that's actually an inseparable part of your work that has to stay. I didn't, Chib, I have not finished that lady, I'm so sorry. Um, so I am getting back to it, but I was giving her some time off because I needed to clear my head a little bit, jump on another piece, see where it took me. Bah. What? Every time I've checked your live, it's raining. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what is up with that? So, so um, for some reason, literally every day is a beautiful sunny day. And the moment I set the easel up and I have the TikTok thing there and I'm about to push the live button, it starts hammering down. I don't know. I don't know. It's what's happening. So uh, anyway, I've just come to live with it now. This is just a, yeah. I just do these in the rain. <laughs> I, think, I think it's gonna slow down as uh, I think it's going to slow down as the days roll by. Surely, surely in the next few days, I'll be able to get outside and do some painting and have some fun. But uh, at the moment, we're under the shelter. This is what it is. Hmm. And we have to be under the shelter too, because these aren't actually... Uh, oils these are acrylics so if i get these wet it'll ruin the painting hola is this realism in base colors or are you making it more vibrant ah uh, we're using a, a picture for likeness is it realism mm, that would be that's an, ah, that'd be an insult to realism and what people achieve there we are in new zealand sorry missed that i that i am in new zealand um so this is more um more expressive, more crazy, more... Is it more fun? For me it is. Um, <laughs> thanks for the roses, guys. Uh, more crazy, more fun. Uh, I want to show off paint being paint as much as I want to show off a picture becoming a picture. Combination between the two. <laughs> yeah, Emerson, I, I don't mean that to insult my work. I mean that to glorify, you know, to, to I mean that to look after what realism does because realism is trying to use paint to create a perfect rendition of a subject and are we doing that no we're not doing that in fact if we said we were doing that that'd be unfair on realism so that's why that's why i say that line it's tongue in cheek brand of acrylics i suppose there's a few new people here so you missed me bringing it up before so i'll show you but uh this is Abstract Innovative Acrylic. And the reason I like them, the paint's very similar to Atelier. So if you're in New Zealand and you shop at Warehouse Stationery, you'll know Atelier Paint's just the um, their premium version. These come in little uh, aioli packets. That's really fun. The aioli packets are fun. I say aioli, it's a sauce packet. Because it's actually really clean to use. It's easy to use. And when you finish it, you use up all the paint. So I'm a big fan of those. Yeah, very clean process. So, 
Big fan. Give me a moment, guys. I'm just going to. What made you become subconscious during painting how you generated the idea? Um, flow states are really important. I think that's what that's about. Um, music, great way to get into a flow state. If you don't have music that you can paint to, just Google it on Spotify. Wait, <laughs> search it on Spotify. Um, and there'll be a whole bunch of painting playlists. There'll be punk rock painting playlists. There'll be country painting playlists. There'll be techno, there'll be chill, there'll be lo-fi, lo-fi, hi-fi? I don't know what to call it everything you need so a great way to get into a flow state for a visual thing is to get some audio going so that's one way to do it um because it won't affect your process to have audio in the background but if you after a while it's like going to the gym uh, after a while you might suck into a stage where you don't need the music to get you in the mood you can just go along there and enjoy yourself um, sort of like we are here like i'm able to i couldn't do this five years ago I wouldn't have been able to paint without music I, just, I couldn't do it but now I can sort of get into that flow state sorry I was walking up my hands get into that flow state um, without music um, is it better nah I still love music can I do it without music yeah which is sort of fun so I think that's I can't remember the initial question now but uh, I think I answered it <laughs> um, yes this is a good belt. Um, my partner got me this belt. She went and handpicked it. So it's my favorite belt. It's a cool belt. Happy about my belt. It's, a, it's actually, uh, I don't know enough about it. It's a tough belt. So big fan, big fan. I've got this belt and I have one other belt, which is a brown belt which actually I like this one more but the brown belt's a uh, brown belt's putting in points what do you do if the painter gets in your clothes um, look there's always a risk of that but I haven't made a mistake yet sorry just taking my shirt properly um, I haven't made that mistake yet but there's always the odds that it might happen um, acrylics it's fine these are water based they'll wash out if it's, uh, God bless, oh, you out of here, see you I'll see you later. Um, if it's oil paints, <laughs> whew, it's gonna be a bit more tough. Yeah. But uh, if you are doing it like this, it does make you sharpen up a bit in terms of where you put the paint. Um, and sometimes I can get a bit lazy, so it's actually good to wear nicer clothes to make you dress smart, paint smart. If you heard me say that before, I'm sorry for repeating myself, but I think more people need to hear it because it's such a lovely message. Um, I believe it. I think it's very, it's a, yeah, wholesome message. Put your nice clothes on, put on your Sunday best, and use some paint. Do that daredevil risky life. You know, some people are out there base jumping some people are out there uh, deep sea diving without oxygen tanks some people are out there in submarines some people are out there doing fighter pilots being fighter pilots well me and you could be here in our sunday best painting because you know that's high risk as well we're not we may not be risking our lives but we might be risking a really nice sweater so you know what that's where we could be at Um, sorry if I'm speaking too fast too guys I realise the accent can be a bit of a battle sometimes but, uh, if you are enjoying yourself I know you've heard me say it before but you'll hear me say it again and you want to spread around some love uh, feel free to push the little share button and we can share the stream with more people to spread some more love um, Diablo Dablo Dab Da dab dab lord dab lord double oh now i'm there dab lord 007 i'm a big fan <laughs> that's a great name uh thank you very much appreciate you and thanks rain cloud appreciate you sharing the live and hopefully 
you've played a role now in someone's day improving because they jumped on TikTok, they came here, and maybe I wasn't just waffling about my favourite movies or colours or paint. And we said something wholesome and we made the day better. So that's where we're at. That's where we're at. Guys, you're all the best, but I am human, and I need to go for a bathroom break. So, love you to bits, but I will be back in like 45 seconds, so this is your chance, although you could go at any time, because, you know, you're watching, but um, this is your chance to get some more popcorn. Refill your paint tray. Um, I don't know. Anything you want to do. I will be back in a moment. Bye. Sorry for bailing guys, and to the 100 people who left, you had an absolute 100% right, uh, right <laughs> to do so, because, uh, now, but I did, I did grab a coffee, but I did it with uh, warm water, not hot water, because that would have taken too long for the jug to boil, so, yeah, um, if you asked any great questions or said anything, I'm sorry for missing it, I'm sure you're lovely. Um, the rain is going to hit the paint a little bit, but it's okay because we're painting on hardboard and hardboard uh, doesn't soak up moisture like uh, MDF does. That's pretty cool. Thanks, Felicia. Cooper flies. <laughs> yeah, appropriate. Um, your brush fell, by the way. Oh, it did. It did. I am lucky you're here. <laughs>
already tripped up on that. There we go. Back up the grass. Up you go. There we are. Our paint tray got hit by a bit of water, but it will still be fine. It's not perfect, but it's fine. You hear something purr. I think there's a car out there. Maybe that's what you're hearing. But uh, nothing nearby here. Sometimes uh, the mood is not expected uh, overwhelming. Thanks, guys. Um, in terms of, I'm not sure, moody, overwhelming. I missed the. Uh, that might have had some context that I missed while I ran off for a bit. But um, look, I was reading a very good book. Um, by a lady who, it was called uh, How to Be an Artist, I think. I don't know why I was reading it. Um, well, it was an art book, but uh, it was really good in that um, she was talking about artists always connecting like sacrifice or pain with art and saying it's not true. A lot of the time creative people have that, but actually it's got nothing to do with your artistic practice. And what was wholesome about that is she was always training and tutoring artists to actually be able to pursue a craft without involving um, that element to it, which is really wholesome because I think if you're going to purchase artwork or be a part of art, it's much more fun to know it's a positive and wholesome experience for both the consumer and the artist. So that's how I feel about it. And thanks for the butterfly. You're the best. Love butterflies. Filled out a uh, online, um, online uh, questionnaire that uh, told me that I. So here I am, your little butterfly spirit animal. Is it hot over here? It is not. In fact, before I so rudely ran off to go to the bathroom, I was. Uh, blowing into my hands to try and warm them up a little bit because it was uh, pretty chilly, all things considered. I'll survive, but uh, Leon, you're the best. I live for loons and rabbits. Thanks for sharing this live. We'll spread some love. Me and you, rabbits. Um, maybe one day. New Zealand and Australia are both amazing places to visit, guys. Um, especially if you're from Europe or America, because your dollars will go a very long way here. Um, the exchange rates are in your favour. Yeah, so it's always wholesome. That's exactly what an Australian looks like. Cowboy hat and whiskers. <laughs> um, I'm not sure that's about Zilla, but uh, I'm sure it's relevant in some way. We're going into some red. Leone, thanks for the finger hearts. I haven't quite understood the finger heart one though, I'm still getting my head around that. Oh, that. I just got close enough to see it. I now know what a finger heart is. You've just taught me what a finger heart is. I didn't know. I was today years off. I was like, yeah. That was literally just figured out just now. I am so late to that party. <laughs> uh, the pants are navy blue. I think it's the light of the camera that's uh, changed them over a little bit, but uh, the navy blue pants. Yeah, I wish it was a lovely summer's day in Auckland. Um, 
but like I've been getting told, uh, I have had some terrible, terrible timing with picking these lives. I'm just like, what's the weather report doing? Is it raining? Perfect. I'll start now. Um, that's obviously not what I'm doing, but that's what it feels like. Sometimes. Yeah, I think so. I'm with you. Here we go. Got him. I think I got him. I got him. Sorry, guys. <laughs> um, my age. I'm 29 years old. Mr. Dinosaur. Kidding. Thanks, Andre. You're the best. Yeah, I, I got him. I think I got him. Uh, painting is awesome, pick. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, I was too busy yarning and doing my own thing over here that I missed that you had a troublemaker. Horn over there. Cheers, guys. Um, yeah, a little bit wild in the Calapella, but uh, in a good way. It's getting pretty cold, team. I'm going to stick it out for another 20 minutes, but then I'm going to go inside because I don't want to catch. But when I go inside, I will be back either tonight or tomorrow morning. Uh, but I'll play it by ear. Kalua, thank you for sharing the live. Spreading some love out there. And Michelle, thank you to you too. Yeah, the white shirt's pretty extreme. Oh, sorry, you've tagged someone else that I I thought the comment was from me. I'm sorry for buddying on your conversation. That's rude. Any other hobbies besides that? Yeah. What else do I like to do? I'm a real nerd, actually. I like uh, all things to do with science. I love science YouTube videos. I love, uh, I used to game a little bit, but I don't do more. Um, but that was fun. Um, like walking, hiking, I like, mm, that's what I like doing. Bunch of things, I like everything. Everything, everything's all good. I think it's less about the activity and more about what you're doing with. I can get on board with just about anything. A real mood activist? I hope not. Could be. Check some of this in the sky. It's like rain. And some of this day rely on. Already paid to do it <laughs> Have you ever done gallery work? I have done gallery work. So I'm spitting that out there. I have done gallery work, um, but at the moment, in my the most recent few months, I've been doing mainly commission based stuff. So um, if you are after a commission, or you'd like to see something special to you done in this sort of style, um, you can contact me by the website in the bio, or 
reach out on Instagram or whatever works best for you. Um, or just stay here with me live and appreciate how fun it is to paint. Either way, you do you. <laughs> no, Andre, I never have. Are you still live? I am still live, C.B. Lewis. Um, but only for another 15 minutes. So. And it's not because I want to leave you guys, and we're not even that finished on our paint tray, if you look at that. But I'm going to call it because I am getting very cold. I don't want to get a flu. And I will be back tonight so we can go more then. What's the approximate lead time on a commission piece? It depends. If you want it done with oils, it can be months because depending on how thick we put the oils on, they need to dry. For acrylics, you need to give me like two weeks to paint and then you need to give me like a week on shipping. So under a month, under a month. Um, yeah, it's a bit. If you come to me and said I need it like as fast as possible, we can work out a trajectory to make it happen. Um, but yeah, it depends on what you're after. That's right, Matthew, we do not love the flu. Um, and if you're in New Zealand, that shipping time's less as well. And if you're picking it up, there is no shipping time. Like, there's a lot of factors that come into it. But, uh, and also, if you want a big piece, hmm, hmm. adds a challenge on there. Sorry, if you want a big piece, it needs time to dry between the layers. So, do you have, uh, my, yeah, fuck. <laughs> yeah, that's actually the easiest way. Like the shipping on a piece is huge, but if you actually come to New Zealand and pick it up, or I come to you and paint it, that's one of the cheapest options. And that's actually on the website as an option. Um, because when you do a piece that's like three meters tall, like a mural, the shipping on that's thousands and thousands of dollars. So the option there just says, buy the artist, ship them to you. Um, and then I'll come to you and paint it on site. And that way, there's no shipping costs. <laughs> that's a win. Come to Canada. I would love to go to Canada again. I loved Canada. It was very cold, but I was a big fan. Everything going on in Canada. I like, uh, what is it, Jimmy Horton's, the fast food chain, by Holson. Where do you get the boxes you ship paintings in? Uh, so, I buy those boxes from uh, a framer here in Auckland, who, um, yeah, he does a lot of frames, but he makes these boxes for me as well. So I get these custom made boxes with pole styring, um, so they're lightweight, but they're very strong at the same time. Very good, very good boxes. Um, because you want a protective box, but it doesn't want to be too heavy at the same time because that throws shipping out more. So it's this perfect balance between protection and weight. Not a single, <laughs> I thought you were saying there's one single splat and I was like, oh no. Thought I had a hot record on that one, but uh, yeah, anyway. Yeah, no, we were, I was, uh, I wasn't intending for it to be raining. This is not, this is not the go. I wanted a nice, hot, warm day, but we didn't get it, so. But, I am making good progress here, guys. This is not, this is not in vain. Um, and I'll keep going. I said for another, Am I worried about rain, rain here on the painting? I am not, not in the slightest. And the reason why is, first off, the board is hardboard, not MDF, so it will handle water very well. And second off, um, if a little bit lands on the painting and mixes with the paint and then makes the strokes get a little more fluid, so be it, so be it. 
so that's where we're at. Hi from Alberta, welcome. Love the rain sound, it's snowing here. Miss painting outside? That's me. I've never painted outside in Canada. I suppose, am I soft? I'm soft. It's, uh, it's too, too cold. But if you can, full kudos to you. Sorry guys, I missed some comments there. Um, Canada in summer, I would love to. I would absolutely love to. Um, I wanted to go on tour with all the paint here at one stage and actually go around some places like uh, particularly America, but Canada and uh, the national park, the, not the national parks and things, and actually paint in them and do that stuff. That'd be fantastic. When are you finished with the painting? Um, this one here, we're getting pretty close in some places, but for the most part, it still needs some finer detail added. Um, I think everyone needs to decide when their paintings are finished in their own time. But uh, for me, I constantly cook it. So when I say cook it, I mean it's a bad thing. I overdo it or underdo it or, yeah. Sometimes you'll finish a painting and you'll think, hmm, you'll sell it and you'll see it somewhere. You think, I left that one a bit early. I should have done a few more coats on there. France is nice. That's cool. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Um, inspiration. Honestly, guys, it's going to sound cheesy, but it's, uh, it's the people who buy the art and you guys. It's really, really fulfilling to do a craft or to have a craft that you can share with people and you can make people's lives better with it. So that's that's number one. That's fantastic. Um, obviously, I love painting. I love being in a flow state. I love making art. I love the color of it. Um, that's all fantastic. Um, but in the process of doing something like that, if it's making other people happy, that's the full loop. Brazil. Welcome from Brazil. That's funky. Never been to Brazil? I want to go. Oh, soon, soon. Give me like eight minutes. <laughs> I mean, offered some food. I will finish off this coat first. Thanks, Andre. Um, yeah, absolutely, if you try the style out. Um, and if you're having trouble or getting stuck anywhere, Andre, um, definitely get in touch. I'd love to uh, answer any questions you've got because uh, it's a weird style. And um, yeah, it's really fun though. Uh, then you have a look-see here. <laughs> Sorry, Montana. Uh, it depends, actually. Um, I was saying before, on the website, if you are somewhere really remote, you can actually, and you're after a really big painting, it's much more efficient to just buy me as an artist and ship me out to paint it on-site because we avoid all those shipping costs. So that's an option on the website. Um, and you can find the website in the bio so that's awesome where am i from nicole i am from new zealand uh, so this is Auckland, new zealand's biggest city but not our capital i 
from Malaysia, another person from Malaysia. Do I always dress fancy? No, I don't. Sometimes I paint looking like an absolute slob, and sometimes I'll paint wearing a uh, apron. But today, to try and sharpen up on brush strokes, because uh, I, I'm getting close to getting too sloppy with them, guys, and I want to get sharper. Um, we're painting, nice. But you can see there, I've missed a stroke, so we all make mistakes. From Indonesia, I love Indonesia, Tony. Um, favorite place, you go from Indonesia, you arrive in Bali, you go over to Lombok, you take a little boat from Lombok to the Gillies. From the Gillies, you go to Gilly Air, and on Gilly Air, there's a bar called Summer Summer, and I stay in their accommodation and have their breakfast and drink their beers. And that, that, my friends, is about as good as it gets. Happy mistakes, yep. Yep, that's a Bob Ross thing. That's what he says. Don't ask you to color anything. Oh, I reckon you're great. Israel, that's pretty cool, Nicole. I've never been to Israel, but uh, I would love to go. I'd really love to go to Israel see what the go is. And I hear Israel restaurants and food is phenomenal. So, hear that all the time. Watching from Thailand and also Thailand Thai food is phenomenal. Layout food, now we're talking. Um, that sound will be, ooh. So that's um, the rain on the ceiling down the pipe, spilling on the ground from the pipe, I think. I think that's where we're at. But if you're just joining, guys, I'm so sorry to disappoint. We have got uh, four minutes left. Four minutes. And then you'll see me again. Just give me some time. Um, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm not, Nicole. I'm so sorry. I am not. So, I think where we're sitting right now, this is going to be, this is going to be a few more coats. Where you get the clothes from, looking sharp, so the top is a Barker's top. Barker's was having a sale, I left on board, and the pants are op shop pants, so thrift store pants. And I got them for $8 in Chicago. So that was fantastic. Are you far from Auckland? I'm in Auckland, Silla. That's where I'm at. Norway. Wild. And hello from New Orleans. It's pretty cool that uh, we can all be here from random places all around the world in one little chat room watching me paint, which is kind of fun. Um, where to go next, though, is the question. Here we are. There we go. Good night for you. All right. <laughs> I'll catch you later. You have a lovely night. See you, Donnie. Did I say that right? Yeah, I'm saying that right. Uh, yeah. You've made the Scottish FYP. What's FYP? I'm pretty excited, though. Um, <laughs> anyway, guys. If you've just joined in, I'm sure you're the best. But I am gone in two minutes. So... In two minutes, I'm gonna wander on inside. I'm gonna have a hot drink. I'm gonna put on a jacket. I'm gonna relax. And then I'm gonna get that meal ready that I was telling you about earlier to go out to dinner. What a wholesome plan. Appreciate it, Nicole. You have a good night too. It is 1.30 p.m. here. I love to see in Venice. I'm not sure what that is and for your page so 
sorry guys. I sort of understand for your page, but I'm not understanding what Scottish for your page would be. I'd need to uh, ask a Scottish person what might be happening. But I'm very excited. I love Scotland. Scotland. Scotland have amazing rugby players. Scotland have amazing accents. Scotland have all sorts of stuff going for them. So that's wholesome. Uh, this piece is already sold. Sorry, Logan. Uh, this piece is going to the guy here in New Zealand, and it's a commissioned piece. So we're just finishing it up. But yeah, thanks, V. You're on it. Um, all right, guys. This is going to pause now. Um, I will leave this paint tray because I come back tonight. Uh, this paint will still be usable. Clean the brush because that'll harden up. And I'll put that somewhere because otherwise it might blow over if it rains heavily. But uh, apart from that, we're all sorted. Guys, you're all the best. I appreciate you all joining to paint with me. And uh, wherever you are in the world, blah, 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 wherever you are in the world, have a great day or a great night. <laughs> Thanks, Justin. Appreciate you. All right, guys. Catch you later.